What's up guys? Today I want to show you how to replace your guitar nut and in my case uh, Astorp didn't glue it in which is you know not really a big deal because some high-end guitar makers they they don't glue theirs in but anyway I, I, you know, I like them glued in and uh, a lot of people first and foremost glued them on the bottom here that's a no-no take the you know nut after you have it filed up put a dot in the center of super glue put it in Hold it there, let it dry after you have it evened up, and we'll go through that process later. But to get this out, what you do, if yours is glued in and uh, Fender Ibanez are a little different than Gibson, which is kind of like this, but they have a channel on the back side of the neck to the fretboard. This one doesn't, it's just straight. So if you have that, no matter what, you're going to take an X Acto knife, run it across here down and back and you're going to repeat that on the other side for a fender and with a fender that would be sitting in here so you would you know score a light line here here back and on the other side Gibson you will score here down down and then on the back and then the do the other side after that if it's fender you're going to take a block a small block of wood or something and you're gonna hit it that way that it pushes out and uh, it could take some time Gibson or any other guitar you know such as this you take a block of wood put it in the middle give it a couple of light blows to try and break that away and you want to make sure you don't damage your finish after it breaks away this way you're going to want to clean this channel out with the glue and then you're going to want to you know use a, a small file or something and make sure that this is on a 90 degree angle the next thing you want to do is you want to take your old guitar nut and your new guitar nut and you're going to want to take a measurement you're going to take your caliper you're going to mic it here which this one happens to be 235 thousandths of an inch and then you're going to take it and mic it there in the middle and uh, basically we can go ahead and you know mic it that way also new one same deal uh, if this happened to be bigger which it's not it's actually a little smaller uh, you would sand the front that butts up against the fretboard here you would sand you'd place that down and sand it down this way rotate it 180 degrees sand it down this way and you're doing it slowly and you're constantly taking measurements to ensure that you have a nice not an over tight fit but a snug fit where it doesn't rock back and forth and same thing with Gibson you know that it just fits in there and that it's seated properly in that channel with that said I seen a lot of people you know if this guitar nut is too high they'll take and they'll sand this down that's a no-no you got a nice factory 90 degree angle here you want to keep that so if your nut is high after you clean the channel in or out you'll set that nut in and you'll leave it high you'll make sure that the neck is flush on both sides you'll glue it in you'll restring it up then you'll go ahead and take a measurement from each string on this first fret after you set the neck relief so after that nut is glued in and you tune back up to pitch you capo the first fret and then you come down to if you're on an acoustic uh, where the body meets this happens to be the 14th fret you'll fret that and then at the seventh fret I always like to look for ten thousandths of an inch under uh, the low and high E once I get that you know I'm I'm good 
then the neck relief is set. So then after that, that's when we worry about the nut height. So we take the capo off and you have your nut glued in and then you use a feeler gauge here. I don't believe in pressing down on the third fret and tapping here. I like to use the rule of thumb uh, 20 thousandths plus or minus 4 thousandths. So you'll slip it under each string until you get your desired height from the feeler gauge to the bottom of the string. If you're high, yeah, if you're high, let's crack a ball. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're going to file with your my, my DIY nut files or whatever you're using. You're going to file along that string angle each slot down there. And then uh, you're going to kind of open up the back on the D and the G a little bit. And you can do that for all of them if you want. So that's the basic principle. Let's get on with this. And uh, oh, before we do that, after you get your nut height, if the string is kind of seated way, way down, you'd take a file, just a regular file, say this was a file, and you would file the top and you would form this part again and then you would kind of just you know chamfer and round over the edges here so they're not sharp and it's much safer and easier to do that and I recommend putting some tape here and here okay so I took my measurements my fretboard at the this point here is one inch 726 thousandths now uh, the old nut from here to here was 1.681 so it's a little that that's quite a bit undersized and even the new one is undersized from what that was so if you have a little longer guitar nut you would set this in say it was sticking out like so with that focus in there you would kind of equal it out if you had that much overhang here and that much overhang there you would set that in there and have equal overhang here and here if I had that much overhang I'd take a fine pencil or a sharpie and run it up that side and then I would do the same on this side, run it up. And then take and sand that down to your line. When you get that done, then we move on to the next part. So on the low E and high E side, I have 231 thousandths, which is a little under quarter inch, 230 thousandths. And I mic the center which is also 231,000. So plus or minus 1,000 is not going to be bad. I don't really have to file this down because the old nut was actually 237, which is a little bit, you know, more. But if yours happens to be bigger, like wider this way, you're going to set this in. And like I said earlier, you're going to want to take and you're going to go back and forth with sanding it this way and that way until it fits in that channel. Okay, so once you got the nut fit in and the strings on, you can see that nut is leaning forward. And if we come back here, you can see there's a gap right there on the high E and over. So that's got to be addressed. But you got to watch because we don't know our spacing. So what we're going to do is tune up, capo it, set the neck relief, and hopefully we can address that. Because if we can't, this nut height is not higher than the old one. 
uh, this one is pretty damn close and that's what you get when you start buying these Chinese knockoff or not knockoff but you know cheaper guitars tolerances just aren't there okay so after we got it all tuned to pitch standard tuning you're gonna capo the first fret and then uh, like I said we're gonna take a measurement by fretting the 14th fret on this guitar or wherever your guitar meets the body and then you're gonna slip a uh, 10 thousandths feeler gauge under 7th fret high E and low E and see where we're at this takes the nut out of the equation to set the neck relief okay so we have a problem here uh, the 6th, 5th and 4th string are good at 24 thousandths right off the, the bat but what we got on the 3rd, 1st and 2nd string is not good at all we don't got 24 thousandths we got 17, 17 on the 1st and 2nd and then we got like uh, 16 on the uh, third string. I like 24 thousandths here and I mean it's intolerance but if we look over here where this space is I have a six thousandths of an inch feeler gauge here okay and if uh, you look that six thousandths fits right over and under there that much so that means we're gonna have to shim this nut up so have to build the six thousandths of an inch that they sand it down here to probably three quarters of the way over here and the other thing is we got the nut centered and we have just a little bit of a lip here and here which uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a file and remove that and then buff that out so I know where the mark is so before I take this off I want to mark this by sanding it down that it's flush that I know where it, where it's at and then I'm gonna mark from here and then I'll know from here to here how low we are and then I'll take another mark and I'll mark where it actually touches the guitar neck alright so all I did is put a pencil line to where the gap is and then over here to where it reaches so we know we gotta fill this and lift it up and that's where we're gonna be working at I'm gonna put a piece of masking tape on the neck here and a piece of masking tape here to indicate where I'm at alright so all I did is uh, put a piece of masking tape to mark this and we'll indicate you know that line on this part because this part I have followed over to where the nut is and then we come down and then over and back and I already filed this down so you can kind of see the transition it's smooth now and the other side is uh, the exact same thing so I'm gonna put a pencil line down here to mark where we have to build up okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our caliper and we're gonna set it on the uh, low E side and I mean you really gotta determine your own we're gonna push this down and take a measurement so you could see this part right here is right at the tape line and then this part up here is at the fretboard we're gonna take that measurement down and that turns out to be 259 thousandths then we're gonna come over to our line and we're gonna take a measurement there so you want the back and then just touch that fretboard and we're gonna take a measurement there which is 298 thousandths of an inch now if you come over here and look you can see this is where our nut ran across and we have the tape so right here is guitar finish we don't want to add any wood there so we're just gonna have to live with that little bit of space and we can only fill in we're gonna take another measurement from here to where that black finish is same way so we'll pan back over this way 
We'll set this right at the black line. Push down. And uh, that is going to be 267 thousandths. So we have that written down. And now we know whereabouts we got to fill and how much we got to fill in. Okay, so now what we got to do is we got to make a shim from this point over and I just took a piece of poplar and uh, it's it goes from fifty thousandths to about thirty thousandths. We're gonna just sand it down, we're gonna measure it and then we're just gonna glue it in there and uh, let it sit for 30 minutes. All right, so all we're gonna do is make a little template, but you're gonna trace that out. But first we're gonna take it and we're gonna sand the bottom of it. And then uh, once we glue it in there, we'll file the top and feather it from this point over. Okay, so what I did here was, you can see I just filed, or sand it rather, point A to point B. Now we're going to take a utility knife, cut that out, we're going to sit that in there, we're going to glue it, and let that sit for 30 minutes like I said. Alright, so I cut that and all I did is lightly sand that, that's going to fit right in there, and then let me find my nut, I'll give you a shot of that. And what we'll do is, uh, we'll glue that in now, and then what we'll do is throw a little black stain, ebony stain right there. But you can see that already fits nice, it's a nice 90. Okay, so just put some glue there, there, and then we're just going to go ahead, and we're going to seat that in there. Make sure we're right. And whatever uh, glue squeezes out, use some uh, Scott towel, damp Scott towel and we're just gonna hold this in place until it sets. What uh, I just did when you're doing this make sure this flat part is parallel with your guitar nut. Like I said inside a low E, inside a high E and you're gonna come down and touch the flat part here to the top of the nut on each side. I have some measurements here, which is 354 thousandths on the low E, 332 on the high E, which gives us a 22 thousandths difference from this side to this side. So it'll, you know, get us in the ballpark for sanding how low this side has to be. So I, the low E is 113 thousandths, and on the high E side, we're five thousandths above that at 117. So that ensures I'm going to have enough material to raise this up, and then what we'll do is take some sandpaper, and we'll feather it from that mark down to about 22 thousandths lower on this side than this side, and that will give us our string depth and we can adjust it from there. Okay, so it's about an hour later and I just got done filing this and the way I did this was I took a piece of sandpaper I put a file on it and there's a smooth edge on this file and I simply kept dragging it across being careful to keep it flush and then we have that 90 degree angle there so when the nut fits in we line that line up make sure our edges are there and you can see that is sitting flush against there and there is absolutely no rock there and I took a feeler gauge to make sure that I can't get anything under the back okay so for the figures we ended up at 104 and 88 that's 16 thousandths of an inch higher on the low E than the high E and that's a difference of eight thousandths which is very minimum and we can adjust that at the nut 
All right, so what I did before we glue this on here is I just took a little bit of ebony stain and stained that around there. And then I took some 1200 grit and sanded it where I filed this and feathered it into the bone nut. Now we're going to take the uh, super glue and the nut, make sure you put it on the right side. And we're going to put a dot of super glue right in here. Okay, so just like that. That's all you want. Let it run down a little bit. I think I got a little bit too much on there. Let me get a Scott towel. Suck some of that up. Way too much. So just blot it off if that happens to you. And now all we'll do is take and if the camera ain't getting this, well, sorry about that, but Hard to do it one hand. You're gonna put that in there. You're gonna hold that like so. Make sure we're even. And we are. We're just gonna put pressure on that right there like so. And hold that there for a minute. All right, so after you wait about five minutes, 10 minutes, what we're gonna do is just take on the D-string, you're going to want to take your caliper first off, okay, and you're going to mic what size string you have. And uh, this back part right here, let me get an angle. We want to create like a little valley and open these ends up just a little bit because it's too much of a, uh, if you lay this in, it's too straight. It doesn't give any flex. We uh, glued that in. You can see everything is set. Nice and straight. And what I did was I went through each string again. And this time after I glued that in, they're all at 24 thousandths where I want them. Now what we'll do, and we're tuned to pitch by the way, now what we'll do is we'll replace the capo and check the neck relief again and then we'll fret down here at the 14th fret with the capo on and check up here at the 7th for 10 thousandths relief. If we're good there, then we'll move on and we'll measure the action at the uh, high E 12th fret and the low E 12th fret. And you can watch my other videos if you don't know how to do that. 